system lockdown enabled. Ever since my first day working here, I've felt a little strange. Now, after what happened that day, things seem to be getting even stranger. I'd even go so far as to say creepy. I've been an embalmer for years now, and I'm very passionate about my job. I've always felt comfortable with what I do, so it's pretty unusual that I feel this way. Two of my colleagues have died. I had to embalm them both. However, Grief can't explain this feeling. Up until just four days ago, I hadn't even known about the history of this funeral home. I already knew that it was ridiculously old, but what I didn't know was that it allegedly harbors some kind of powerful aura which traps and torments the spirits of people who have died in a state of grief or fear, and have at some point been associated with the building in one way or another. These associations apparently include those occurring post-mortem, such as embalmings and funerals. To make things even weirder, this place has a serious lockdown system. Yesterday was the first time I've ever seen it used, and many of the workers, including myself, were ordered to wait in the family room until the situation was taken care of. No one I've spoken to about it knows why it was done, or at least they won't say. All I know is that these safety glass windows and electronic gates appear to be designed for keeping things in rather than out. I was the first responder that day. I was the first and only person to make it to Myrtle's side before she passed away. She managed to give Sullivan a parting I love you on that baby monitor, but that was the last communication they ever had. The last thing she ever did was give me that piece of paper. It was a short poem she had written for Sullivan earlier that day. She asked me to give it to him, and I promised her I would. Then she slipped away. I guess Sullivan had picked up by Myrtle's weak rasping in the baby monitor that something was happening to her, because soon after she'd passed, he came running into the hall from the upstairs arrangement room. But he was too late. She was gone. That's when he broke down. I'd never seen him show so much emotion towards Myrtle before. Then, of course, the rest happened. I'll keep my promise. Even now, it's all I can do for my dear friends. There are a lot of strange things I've seen around this place. For instance, a fireplace that isn't even a real fireplace. It's some kind of ladder shaft, but there's a tough metal grate fastened over it that appears to be controlled electronically, most likely by the lockdown system. I'm assuming the shaft leads down to the basement, but it must have been sealed off because it's not accessible from anywhere down there. Another thing I've started wondering about is a metal handle that's been sitting on Michael's desk for about a month now. I asked about it once out of curiosity, but he avoided giving me a direct answer. He told me it broke off of something. I had already assumed this, seeing as it's covered in dirt and rusted around the edges where it had clearly been attached to something for a very long time. Perhaps the biggest mystery I've encountered here is the place Myrtle always went for privacy. 
She was often depressed, so she was always going into the downstairs hall on her way to wherever it was she went to be alone. However, she seemed to vanish. The only place she could have gone from that hallway is down into the basement, but I went down there one day to ask her something and I couldn't find her. I'm wondering if there's a secret room somewhere down there. After all, I did learn from Michael that this building is from the 1600s, long before it was ever a funeral home. Buildings as old as this one sometimes have quite a few secret areas. <laughs> they still haven't buried them. Sullivan has been lying in his coffin now for two days and Myrtle for three. Because Conrad refused to touch Myrtle's coffin after her funeral, it had to be put aside so Sullivan could have his. Conrad still simply doesn't want to have anything to do with the burial of either of them, even if all he's doing is preparing a future grave without actually touching the coffins. I'm starting to wonder if he had some type of unpleasant encounter with Myrtle and Sullivan's coffins, or he heard some absurd rumor about their corpses. What's sad is that Myrtle and Sullivan don't have relatives who care enough about their burials to actually do something about this. Michael was embarrassed to have to tell all the relatives and friends that the actual burials couldn't be held yet. Even so, none of them objected. Maybe they just didn't see a point in doing so, considering the person they would be doing it for is already gone. I don't know. As far as feeling nervous around coffins, I do get a strange vibe now in the visitation room. The atmosphere in there is starting to feel different. The air feels heavier, a little bit oppressive even. It seems to be more noticeable today than it was yesterday. I'm not quite sure if I believe in ghosts or not, but it seems to fit what I've heard before about locations having uncomfortable negative energy due to evil or extremely upset spirits. Maybe it's just normal stuff here. There aren't any windows in there, and it is the middle of summer. Turns out that Devin got into the morgue by stealing Sullivan's keycard from the office. Mrs. Raines had been in there and forgot to lock it when she left. Nobody knows exactly how the kid figured out the passcode, but considering what a flake his mother is, that's probably just something else she inadvertently compromised. They're burying Sullivan with a few of his belongings from the funeral home. I guess because he had worked here for so long and was so loyal to his job. Michael revealed that one of those belongings is Sullivan's keycard. Of course, they would need to deactivate it from the system to avoid any breaches in the chance that it was stolen, but then again, Mrs. Raines would be the one who would do that. I discovered earlier today that Devin had stolen the system lock override key as well and hidden it somewhere in the building. This has got to be the most troublesome, ill-behaved kid I have ever encountered.
Sullivan James was blind as a bat. Sullivan James fell down flat. Sullivan James is withered and blue. Sullivan James is coming for you.